Assalamu alaikum wa dear students, welcome back to our sessions for the subject organization behavior. Today, inshallah, we will take the last topic about this uh, subject in which we will discuss the organization structure and design. In this topic, we will have the following objectives. You can find here that these are more about the company's hierarchy and structures. And accordingly, this is the last determinant of employees' behaviors in uh, companies, meaning that we have discussed the individuals and then we discussed the groups. Now we end up with the organization in general and how such kind of structure may affect the behaviors of the employees, of course, to the good interests of the company. We have the following objectives. We will discuss the elements of the organization structure evaluate the different forms of work coordination in the organization. We will differentiate between the mechanistic structures and the organ organic structure. We will discuss and evaluate the different organizational structures. And finally, we will evaluate the impact of the organization environment on its structures. And according to these objectives, we will have the following topics here. Elements of the organization structure, the work coordination in organization, mechanistic structures versus organic structures, functional structure, divisional structure, and the project-based matrix structure, and organization environment and structures. Now, the introduction about this topic can be seen in one of the companies producing a quite common product. Coca-Cola, for example, is a very a large company considered to be one of the global organizations around the world. So here the decentralization of Coca-Cola is one of the strategies or one of the uh, policies adopted by the company to fit with the, with the kind of business, the nature, uh, the geographic area, territories where this company operates. So the company came to the decision that the way the work and decisions are made will directly affect the employee's behavior. And that is why the uh, uh, organization structure and the way the work is divided is uh, an important rule or can have an impact on individual's behavior. So we find here the decentralization, which is we have a lot of branches in India and that decisions are made according to geographic areas, not in the center or the headquarter. So Coca-Cola, decentralize its organization structure by cutting half of the staff at its Atlanta headquarters and move, moving the uh, regional chief towns closer to their local markets. So decisions will be based on the market, more contact with the market, and will be based on the needs and the requirements of that market. So the headquarter will be a little bit um, separated from those plans in terms of decision-making process, which is quite amenable, eligible for such kind of businesses. So in India, decision making has moved further down to different, area, different areas of, of that diverse country. And when we talk about diverse country, we talk about different needs and wants. And that make it logic to decentralize. So division of labor, which has been done in many plants um, uh, around India, is about the following. Division of work into separate jobs assigned to different people. So instead of having one big entity, one big entity doing the job in a factory, so the work will be divided into different units, which implies more proficiency and efficiency in achieving these tasks. So potentially increases the work efficiency. Necessary as a, as a company grows and work becomes more complex. So you can no longer rely on a chain of work. Rather, the work should be somehow divided into units so that the work is now based on different standards for each of these units. And accordingly, the standards, the quality of the work, the outcome will be way much better. Now the forms of work coordination. As we talk about division of labor, we talk also about the coordination uh, within this organization. So we have informal communication as the first issue. So 
defining the work is uh, one reason why we have such kind of issues, which is communication as considered to be, according to many researchers, a key element in the success of companies in terms of the flow of information, sharing experiences, and avoiding problems. So, we have informal types of communication, which is a good means of sharing information, usually high media richness, because there will be no barriers and obstacles, uh, such as um, formal hierarchies, formal channels that information should go through. And it is, of course, important to teams. Okay? So, team members will feel that they, they have been given enough space for freedom. And such kind of thing will enable them to move and communicate um, more uh, and faster, better than informal channels. We also have formal hierarchy. Here the kind of information and the coordination of the work comes as steps according to the hierarchy of the organization. So direct supervision from top downward. Common in large firms. In large firms, it is quite common we have this kind of uh, communication means because uh, if not, maybe it will waste time. The information can be distorted. And that is why most of the companies here prefer the formal hierarchy. But they still allow a space of informal uh, communication, of course. Now, but the problems here, it is quite costly, slow, because it has to go through different layers, different hierarchies. Less popular with young staff who are quite, um, or who tend to um, prefer the informal communication because of the uh, tendency of such kind of uh, staff. And then we have the standardization here. It's about formal instructions made by the top management to better uh, sort out the work. Here, when we have standards, things will be clear. The goals will be clear. The outcome should be based on these standards. So accordingly, the, the uh, clear goals here and output should be of high standards. Now, what are the elements of the organization structure? We have different elements we need to discuss uh, the time you talk about the structure. For example, this plan of control, the centralization, we have also the formalization and departmentalization. So we go through them. Span of control is defined as the following. It's the number of people directly reporting to the next level. So look at this one. If you consider those are the people working in this unit, so this is the span of control who are supposed to report to this director. Okay? So the more employee you have, the wider the span of control is. So assume coordination through direct supervision. So a span of control can allow the directors and supervisors to better communicate with the employees. But sometimes if the span of control is quite wide, this kind of communication might face a lot of problems. So that is why further division of labor uh, might be advised. Or within the span of control, there can be also different teams. So why the span of control possible when support nice tasks are similar? Tasks are routine. So for example, in a restaurant where you have a lot of uh, clients a day, so there can be a supervisor, and they can be up to 20 uh, waiters, for example. Now, those people have the same kind of job working in such kind of um, uh, organization. So that is why span of control actually depends on uh, issues, like, for example, the nature of the work, the number of employees, and also, um, let us say, uh, whether such kind of work is uh, routine or not. Now, flatter structure require wide span of control. As you said, flatter structure would be as this. Now, this is an example of flatter organization in which you have wide span of control. The thing that actually defines this is not actually the wish of the manager. Rather, it is the nature of the work. So we have a lot of things to be done at a time. So we need this number of employees handling these ta tasks. And accordingly, 
those people will work under supervision of one uh, person. So that's why we call it flatter. While other organizations can go narrow like this. Now again, the nature of the work requires like three to four employees handling all the jobs within this department. For example, designing companies, architectures, etc. usually do not require, such businesses do not require a lot of people in departments. Now, here's an example of span of control at a company called Ducks Unlimited. So Ducks Unlimited Canada recently flattened its organization structure by removing layers of management. So here we have this long hierarchies in this company. Now these are layers. Some of these layers were moved away. So it becomes like this. Now the reason of doing this here, the company wanted flatter structure to empower employees. Employees now are more capable of uh, doing things such as communicating, um, taking decision uh, according to the needs, um, behaving on such a way that they believe is needed without having any obstacles going upward uh, for decisions or for acceptance of such kind of decisions from different management layers. So this let them make decisions quickly without having to go up the hierarchy. Now, we have centralization and decentralization as another element of the structure. But we have forces here for decentralization or centralization. In other words, why do companies need to centralize, which is the decision will be uh, taken by top management or the center of the company in the headquarter if the company is um, quite big. And decentralized, meaning that decision is granted to different plants, different subsidiaries, and different geographic areas. So there are some reasons why companies actually take decisions like this. So we take the first one here. Centralization, the organizational crisis, means that the company would like to take decisions in the center or by top management um, for many reasons, one of which is the existence of crisis such as the financial crisis that happened in 2008 in Europe, a lot of companies turned this kind of uh, behavior into centralization. They'd like to make sure that the decision being made by top management consider all the plans and fit with the current situation. So this is why centralization in this kind of circumstances is widely recommended. Also sometimes management desire for control which is a, a policy here. So maybe there is a desire for uh, uh, control from the top management, especially if you're talking about employees in different plants, different branches in different geographic areas, and not from the same country, or we call them third uh, country nationals, or sometimes host country national. They're not parent country nationals, which means that the managers of these branches are not from the same country, where the company is located. So the top management here would like to control all the branches and accordingly decisions will be centralized. Inclu uh, including the uh, topics here, uh, the points uh, we mentioned, other points can be consistency and reducing cost. McDonald's, for example, would like to make sure that the quality of the food offered is exactly the same as the one it is always promoting. So that is an example why companies would like to centralize. However, decentralize is, not, is another issue. Here, the company provides some kind of space enough for employees in different branches to take decisions. Now here, complexity. So the more complex the environment where these different branches are, the more chances companies will provide decentralization. Okay. So here, the work is not actually the same in the headquarter, for example, in Yemen. The work of the companies in Yemen, for example, uh, let us say other countries like Egypt, like Morocco. So the kind of business here would be different because of the complexity of uh, the environment, the kind of needs, the number of employees, etc. So 
In this case, it is better for the company to decentralize. Also, the bigger, the better centralized uh, um, company should take. The more diversity, different needs, different wants, different competition strategies in different countries will require the company to adopt centralization, decentralization. Because a decision that fits in this country is not necessarily right in the another country. And also desire for empowerment. Here, it's another policy or tendency by the top management to empower its own employees. It's a way to develop future leader for the, for the business by providing them enough space to take decision, which is empowerment. Now, mechanistic versus organic structure. So the mechanistic companies, or the companies that adopt high formalization, so it is usually formal communication adopted by these companies than, it, than uh, informal, usually of narrow span of control and of high centralization. While on the other hand, we have the organic. In such kinds of company, the company provides enough space for employees to take decisions. The uh, informal um, communication means are quite accepted. Wide span of control and, of course, low centralization. This is specifically uh, more in companies with the, with the nature of business or with the environment where these companies operate uh, uh, are complex. There is... Um, uh, diversity, more needs, um, and so accordingly, decentralization here uh, is not a good uh, decision. Now, the effect of departmentization, we have different effects here. It establish work, establishes work team and supervision structure, as we have different departments in which works are divided according to these um, departments, creates common resources, measures of performance, etc. You cannot measure the performance of one big entity, but you can do that quite easily if these departments are actually set according to different speciality, different needs, and of course different performance. Encourages informal communication among people and subunits. Now we go to the structures. We have different types of structures adopted by businesses. The first one is referred to as the functional organization structure. Now here, if you're talking about functional organization structure, we're talking about a company that the, uh, adapted such kind of hierarchy according to the kind of skills employees have in these different departments. So for example, organizes employees around skills or other resources such as marketing and production. So here we have the pres president, which is the top management, of course. And finance here, people are gathered around according to their own skills and competencies. So that is why we call them functions. In the production area, we have different peoples of different skills affiliating to this very specific kind of measure. Who have skills here are typically different from those people uh, working in other functions. In marketing, we have employees with such, with such kind of expertise and experiences in dealing with promotion, advertising, and the like. So this is the first type of structure which is quite common in many companies. Now the second type is called divisional structure. So we said yeah before the functional organization structure which, which is based on functions like finance, production, marketing, sales, uh, etc. Why the other the other the other one here is, is about is more about division. So we call division divisionalized structure. In the divisions here, uh, companies would like to organize employees around geographic areas or products or sometimes clients. In other words, this is not more about functions. It is more about subsidiaries and different or quite specific names of products, more specifically companies that have different production lines. So for example, here, enterprise system is one division, one uh, department, laser jet solution, con consumer pr products. Okay, so this is an example of divisionalized structure. Sometimes it could be based on 
location. For example, a bank might divide its work according to geographic areas. So we have a branch specific for Sana'a, a branch specific for Aden, for example, and a branch specific for uh, Hadramaut. So such kind of work division is not about function, rather it's about specific kind of division such as either products or places, okay, or territories. Now the third one is called the project-based matrix. Project-based matrix, as the name suggests, this is a kind of structure that is actually based on two things. One, the ordinary work of the organization, and the second one is actually based on projects. So that is why a company would like to utilize the kind of employees, competencies, experiences in achieving these projects. So that is why it's a matrix. So here, employees are temporarily assigned to a specific project, not permanently, for a given period of time, say uh, six months, one year, two years, according to that project. And uh, these teams have a permanent functional unit which means that we borrow those employees from their own functions. Now, let's have a look at here. This is the top management. Now, this is project A manager. This is a project, and those are the functions which we discussed before. So the company is actually based on functional um, kind of structure, but because this kind of um, businesses somehow deal with different projects, they adopt such kind of structure. So the production manager, marketing manager, and software manager. Now for this project, we need four employees from this department, which means that the project manager will borrow four employees from this department or this function. Until this project is done or finishes, those people will go back to the function. And uh, so is the, the case with marketing manager. In this case, this project requires three, and this project requires three software manager. While we have another project, here in this project, we only need two employees from this department, and accordingly. So companies such as, uh, let us say, um, Dell or um, the companies that produce um, uh, laptops, for example, car manufacturing industries, chip, electronics, etc. Such kind of businesses usually adopt a lot of projects together with their own production lines. So these kind of projects are actually based on contracts between the company and other clients. These clients can be other businesses or even governments. So they handle different projects and at the same time they do their ordinary business. So the best type of structure will be accordingly the project-based metric structure. Now we have also something referred to as team structure here. This is an example of work that is based on different units at Jabil Circuits. Jabil Circuit relies on a team-based organization structure. Look here. The team is actually considered to achieve different tasks according to the need. Here, at its manufacturing operations, each production team is responsible for specific customer group. So team, member have, here, team members have a high degree of autonomy and are cross-trained. Cross-trained according to the need of such kind of production. And those people have greater autonomy, which means that they can take decisions on their own according to what they think is needed. They don't have to go to go upward to top management to um, discuss such kind of decisions. So, such kind of autonomy is given to help them achieve the job probably and more efficiently. Now the features of team-based structures are as follow. There are more self-directed work teams. Self-directed means that autonomous, given enough space to take decisions, are not directly linked to other layers. Team organize around work processes. For example, manufacturing cars can be of different units or even manufacturing, as you see here, uh, electronic chips and devices 
So each team may have specific kind of tasks, and each member may have his own kind of speciality in which he or she can he or she can handle the job without having any kind of interruption from different employees. So here, very flat span of control because of the need of the work, very little formalization here, and usually found within divisionalized structure, not functional, because these are more about manufacturing, uh, so it is found more in manufacturing industries. We have another kind of structure, as you find here, which is referred to as network organization structure. This is, of course, for glo global companies and transnational kind of businesses around the world. So the core firm or the headquarter, according to this example, is located in the, in the United States of America. So this is the core firm. We have other branches, subsidiaries, or affiliates in different places, different countries around the world. So, for example, here, product development firm in France, customer services firm in Canada, accounting firm USA, production firm China, and marketing in United Kingdom. So, this is only the kind of structure that fits um, global businesses that are gigantic business establishment. So, the type of structure will link all these kind of affiliates or subsidiaries into one structure based on speciality, based on territory as well. Now the types of organization, organization technology. If you assume here uh, the analyzability and variety, okay, we have high variety and high analyzability, so it would be engineering project. So actually you need very specific kind of speciality okay, in such kind of businesses. Now, if we go a little bit here, we have low analyzability and low variety, what would be skilled traits. So, this actually varies according to the type of technology needed and the kind of expertise. So, that is why organizations sometimes develop their own structure based on the nature of the business itself. So, it's not a decision made by top management, rather the nature of the business, the capability of the firm, the availability of uh, staff, which we refer to as high uh, or skillful staff, all are factors that somehow allow the company to choose the best type of uh, structure. Now, the organization environment and the structure, which is the last topic, we have here dynamic, this is the first kind of structure and environment kind of relationship. In the dynamic, as the name suggests, there will be high rate of change. So the type of business where these companies operate is not stable. And accordingly, the structure itself will not be stable. So there will always be a change in this structure. So the best type of structure here, of course, will be the organic structure. On the other hand, we have the stable environment. So this is TD conditions and predictable change. Again, the nature of business is the thing that can tell about such kind of environment. So if a company operates in such kind of environment where this environment is quite stable and kind of actions, changes in the market or in the way businesses run is easily predicted. So the best type of structure here would be the mechanistic structure, as we said before. And we have here the complex in terms of tasks, so many elements such as stakeholders, and the best way here is to decentralize. We said before, diversity, variety of needs, variety of opinions, and the varieties of interest by stakeholders would make it very difficult to centralize. So decisions made by top management would not be good here. Because of the complex nature, there must be decentralization to fit with different uh, needs. 
Uh, when we talk about stakeholders, we, we talk about many issues, interest here of uh, customers, of the clients, of the workers, the community, the environment, the government, etc. And of course, the shareholder. And simple kind of nature, few environmental elements. The number of environmental elements are very few and quite manageable. So here, there's uh, less need to decentralize, meaning the best structure element here is to centralize. Top management in this can take decision quite easily because there's no complexity as for the number of stakeholders around the business. The number, the, the number of elements around the business is not big, very few, and the nature of the business is quite easy. The environment is stable, so it is better to centralize. Or, if being centralized, the number of problems will pop up, will not be as much as those of complex. We also here have the diverse, as you said before, the more diversity, the better we have divisions, the better we have uh, decentralization. So, variety of products and variety of clients and locations. A company has different product or production lines and different clients of different needs and wants besides locations. So this is kind of environment where some businesses operate. So the best type of structure to adapt such kind of nature is the divisionalized structure. And the divisionalized structure, as I said before, it is rather structured according to these kind of territories or geographic areas. As you said before, the bank that operates in different governorates is actually based on different uh, or variety of services given to people in different areas. So that is why divisional form aligned with the diversity is a good uh, choice. Integrated, on the other hand, we have single product, client, and location. If we have such kind of simple kind of work, then we don't have divisional form because there will be no use to divisionalize your business if you can handle all these tasks which are similar in one section. Then we have hostile. So here it is hostile in terms of intensive competition and resource scarcity. So if there's resource scarcity and competition around such kind of resources, so this environment is quite complex. So the use of organic structure for responsiveness is the best solution. So the more intense the competition is, the better the informal communication, so that decision will be faster, the better it is decentralized, so that decision will be based on the need of such kind of places. And finally, we have munificent. Munificent here have plenty of resources. So unlike the first one, the hostile environment, there will be no need to the organic structure because resources are a lot uh, and the product demand is not, of, uh, is not subject to this kind of intensive competition. So here decisions can be made by top management. There will be, uh, informal, there will be formal communication to better um, uh, control the work. There's no complexity in needs and wants by different clients. So here, uh, organic structure fits more such kind of environment. So by this, dear students, we come to the end of our topic for today. We discuss according to the uh, topic the following issues. We discuss the elements of the organization structure and work coordination. We differentiated between the mechanistic structure and organic, organic structure in terms of the environment, the type of business, the kind of complexity, and the, the, the right of top management to choose according to such kind of nature. We discussed and evaluated the different organizational structures. We said that we have three types of structures quite common. For example, the functional, the visualized, and the matrix one, project based matrix structure. 
and we evaluated the impact of the organization environment on its structure. Dear students, you have uh, an assignment attached to the session, which is assignment number 12. And you're supposed to answer the questions in the assignment according to the uh, uh, rules set as for the time, duration, and deadline. By this, we come to the end of our session. Thank you very much for listening. I wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.